U.S. President Joe Biden is meeting with leaders of the Bucharest Nine today. Now, that's a grouping of NATO members from the eastern flank, specifically Bulgaria, the Czech Republic, Estonia, Hungary, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Romania and Slovakia. The grouping was formed in 2015 as a response to perceived Russian aggression after Moscow annexed Crimea a year earlier. The same countries had expressed concern that Russia's offensive in Ukraine could spill over. Ahead of today's meeting, the White House acknowledged that the Bucharest 9 is presently on the front lines of NATO's collective defence. And Julia Chapman joins us live from Warsaw. Julia, Mr Biden, the Bucharest 9 and NATO as a whole, what are they all hoping to get out of this meeting? Well, certainly this is a big meeting for the leaders of the Eastern European countries that form the Bucharest Nine of NATO allies, the Baltic states, the Black Sea states, and several Central European countries as well, many of whom have been sounding the alarm about Russian aggression for many years before the invasion of Ukraine on February 24th last year. Certainly what they are looking to get from this meeting with Joe Biden is a assurances from the United States that it stands by European security. There will also be discussions about boosting defensives of many of these countries, boosting defense spending, perhaps buying more weaponry from the United States itself. But Lithuania in particular has been vocal about trying to uh, bolster its own air defenses, for example. So there will be discussions about what exactly the nature of the NATO infrastructure is in these Eastern European countries, which, as you say, the White House have described as the, uh, the, the collective defense, the front line of the collective defense of the NATO alliance. So a very important region from the perspective of European defense. Uh, Joe Biden will be coming in to reassure these countries of his commitment to their security. He said yesterday uh, that he is dedicated to NATO unity. He said uh, a White House spokesperson said that Joe Biden was committed to defending every inch of NATO territory and would put in place the necessary capabilities to do so. On the question of unity, uh, Julia, one of the slight surprises that has come out of this war almost a year in now was the relative cohesion in European and American positions on Russia, generally speaking. Is that a fair assessment that there has been cohesion? And is there anything that could test this cohesion? Certainly this uh, war has brought many of these allies together uh, to fight a common purpose. So this has really seen a consolidation of many European partners working with the United States more closely than they have for years. But of course, there do still remain some tests. Not every single NATO member is quite as committed to backing Ukraine to the same extent as some of their other partners. For example, Hungary has been a little bit more wary of implementing sanctions against Russia. It's still doing some deals uh, with the country. And indeed, it is one of the members of the Bucharest Nine, certainly coming at this conflict from a different perspective than perhaps the Baltic states or Poland indeed. But definitely we are seeing uh, a rallying cry amongst many of the NATO members, giving them a purpose uh, th through this war, which they are backing the Ukrainian side, providing extra weaponry to help Ukraine defend itself. Uh, undoubtedly, there will still be difficult moments ahead. That was one of the warnings from Joe Biden yesterday, but he urged partners that the U.S. has been working with over the past year to continue their efforts, insisting that it was worth it to do so. Well, thanks for that. Julia Chapman with the very latest from Warsaw.